Hello friends, it's still hashtag mermaid and I'm Milo. So last week I played the Capcom NES and Game Boy Little Mermaid games. This week I'm actually revisiting something I played before on the stream, but I guess I'm going to be a bit more thorough about it this time. This is the Sega edition of the Little Mermaid game. It came out a year later in 1992. Um, but yeah, it was on the Mega Drive, it was also on the Game Gear, and exclusively to Brazil, it was on the Master System, which is the same kind of architecture or system or whatever as the Game Gear, so it's easy for them to make lots of ports from Game Gear to Master System, where this, the that console had a longer life in uh, Brazil under Tectoy than it did in other parts of the world. So, Gibbons here, hello, good to see you. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm sort of planning uh, two, maybe three playthroughs of this game in total. So we're gonna get started here. Um, I probably put on easy last time. Um, I've read a bit more on the differences uh, between the different uh, difficulties. You've got easy, medium, and difficult. Easy gives you more items. You get extra keys and special attacks and uh, also a lot more continues. When you run out of lives um, but the main gameplay difference in the modes is that on easy once you fulfill the objectives you go straight away to the boss whereas in medium and difficult you actually have to find a, a an entry to the boss um, screen um, on difficult it doesn't appear on the map and on medium it does and difficult also gives you i think only one continue um, and no like special items at all from the start. So we're going to go medium for that extra little bit of gameplay. And I, I want to show off Triton, but I really, you know, I want, I really would prefer to play as Ariel. So I'm going to do an Ariel run. And then if I have time afterwards, I'll do a quick Triton run. Um, chiefly for the purpose of seeing what Ariel looks like in polyp form, which hasn't been seen in any other media as far as I know. Anyway, uh, sound on please. Let's go. So yeah, I originally played this game on stream because I found out that unlike most other Little Mermaid games, in fact I would say all other, um, it plays a little bit like Echo the Dolphin, which I was desperately falling in love with at the time and I still um, hold Echo very dear to myself. So this is kind of like it in a way. You have a big open level to explore. Um, what's the button? Yeah. You get a little sonar map. Shows you the entire layout of the stage uh, in this case. Um, yeah, so your objective is to traverse this big open map freely. Um, there's enemies to deal with, of course, under the command of Ursula the Sea Witch, I expect. <laughs> And yeah, you gotta find all the polyps that are scattered around. Once again, the work of that nasty sea witch. Oh yeah, and Scuttle's shop, of course. So these are all the things you can do. Um, that's an extra continue. Health refills. Let's get a small one since we have some treasure. Um, extra special attacks. So um, Ariel's special attack shoots a magic star out. And I guess it's more powerful than her regular attack or something. It's, and it's pretty cheap to get extra ones. We start with a few keys because it's medium difficulty. These for opening treasure chests, which then give you more stuff. But yeah, this whole helper fish system is um, like a key feature of this game. Sebastian will make you invincible and scare away enemies. Flounder can move boulders for you, so it's a bit more like a puzzle um, mechanic. And the numbers below is how many of each I have. And this is the digger fish. Not given a name, no capitalization even. In the manual, it's just called The Digger Fish. This is unlike anything that has been seen in any extended media, although at the time that this game came out, I think the movie was really all they had to go off. Maybe the early Disney miniseries um, of comics? <laughs> but um, yeah, the animated series brought a lot more to the table that later comics and things would then work from. But at this point, we really only have the movie to go on. And yeah, The Digger Fish, whoops, that was the wrong button. I don't know how to leave this screen. Nope, not that one. <laughs> Just press start. Okay, that's the thing. <laughs> Given quoting me there, medium for that extra little bit of gameplay. Oh, free key, I'll take that. 
So you can touch the polyps or use your basic attack on them uh, to free them and transform them back into mer people. You know, it's just that simple. <laughs> um, they could have done that in the movie, but Ursula was there the whole time, I guess. Yeah. So it's good to check the map every now and then. The game's not too difficult. Um, it's, I suppose, meant to be playable by children. Um, so, but, so, you know, that's good. <laughs> that means I don't have to stumble around and lose progress all the time. Now, yeah, one thing I'm noticing is the extreme amounts of slowdown when too many things are on screen at once. Spooky beetles, just like Echo. Um, crabs, I guess, some kind of arthropod. Uh, yeah, so Ariel's um, normal attack is her magical singing voice, as, as the manual says. Yay, coins. Oh, what's going on? Give me the coins? Okay, it's a bit hard to pick them up. Hitboxes are odd. There we go. Yeah. I guess the only time in Echo that you interact with sort of human artifacts and leftovers is Echo Jr., which coincidentally is my favorite of all the Echo games, just because it's so gentle and, oh my gosh, this clam. Did I die? Yeah, 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 that's it, I died. I lost a life and in this game, that means the life gets ex uh, used up straight away and your health gets restored. Um, hold on a second, or is it continues? Like I lost my health, yeah. See that lower right like star thing? It went from four to three when my health ran out. So it's continues uh, acting as lives. Normally in, in certain types of games, lives, uh, you know, you have a number of those and then when they run out, you have a continue. But this one is a different type of game, I guess. Yeah, the slowdown is actually pretty distracting if I'm honest. Okay, so going through, where are we? I've missed a couple of polyps, oh well. We'll circle back around for them. We don't actually need to go through this boulder passage. I think that's the kind of thing that you would use flat. Oh no, this is it. So I can't get through here. I'd have to go through the crushing boulders instead. But um, let me see, press select. No, that's not it. Yeah, this screen. So here's where you change which friend you want to pull out. And then button C. Come on, Flounder. Yeah, there you go. Now, interestingly, this is similar to Flounder's ability that we saw in the Game Boy Advance game. He was able to push heavy boxes and stuff, even though really he's a reasonably small fish. Um, and I didn't actually explain what the digger fish does. These sandy spots, you dig in them. We saw that mechanic in the NES game as well, actually. Ariel was able to use her tail to dig up stuff on her own. But in this one, we're gonna call on the help of that old, what's the button again? Yeah, okay, cool. So we'll pull out Diggo. That's actually fun, isn't it? There's a different music track on the menu screen. I'm gonna let that run a little bit. Gibbon says, ah, oh, sprite limits, yeah. They were more ambitious than they could, than the hardware could deal with. Interesting that there's slowdown, as the usual method of dealing with that was stuff despawning. Yeah, maybe part of the problem is that the singing attack has so many uh, particle trails and so on. It has to draw a lot of stuff. Also, the extra life counter is constantly flashing on the screen. I don't know if that would eat up um, sprite memory or something. Nice tune, actually. <laughs> nice little bop. While we're here, I want to leave this bop going a little bit, but I'll just tell you a little bit about, a bit about Blue Sky. Blue Sky Software is the studio, the development house that created this game. Um, their softography includes a lot of licensed games on the Atari 7800 and the, and the Mega Drive and some other things, a couple of things on PC, but they're most well known for creating Vector Man and Vector Man 2 for Sega, which is still uh, a series of games that gets talked about to this day and gets included on their, you know, Mega Drive collections. Um, 
kind of groundbreaking pre-rendered graphics similar to Donkey Kong Country that was very impressive at the time and fast exciting gameplay as well um, they also did the two I think pretty well regarded uh, Mega Drive Jurassic Park games and I also noticed something on there Ninja Golf for the Atari 7800 which is a game that I brought up during the Battle Golf at UE stream that's an example of a golf game that includes other gameplay segments in this case ninja action battles on a side-scrolling perspective anyway that's a nice little music track there so dig a fish my friend let's go so we got a gem worth 200 out of it whereas buying another charge of a digger fish cost me 150 at scuttle's shop i believe so it was worth it in that case but we might get even more valuable things now i like that we're not really destroying anything here we're using our voice and that sort of scares away the animal that's attacking us and they run off screen of course they are respawning it looks like it's too bad you know what these boulders aren't so hazardous <laughs> Now, where are those other extra polyps? Yeah, so in this case, that flashing X I, I would be the entrance to the boss level, or boss zone. Um, and on easy, once you get all the polyps, I believe, I probably should have watched my old stream maybe, but yeah, I believe that you would go straight to the boss. Whereas on medium and difficult, you actually have to find that door and get through it. Now notice the bubbles flowing up there, that, there's a strong current in that channel that was pushing me back. Ah, narrow escape. You know, while we're backtracking, maybe we should pop in on Scuttle and maybe buy some health. What I should probably do, there you go. A lot came out there, that signifies to you that it's the last one. Yeah, I was saying what I might think about doing is saving up and buying extra lives. We don't have enough for that actually right now, but let's get a full refill. Hmm, I'll leave it at that for now. Anyway, Ariel's magic voice. I don't know where she gets the power to shoot a star, but that's just how cool she is. But yeah, the, the, the voice thing. Um, we do see that in other mermaid games, don't we? Uh, the During my stream two weeks ago, I played um, that roguelike game. It was called uh, Serenade of the Sirens, I believe. Oh, that rock respawned. How rude. Yeah, in Serenade of the Sirens, um, I'll play a character there don't recall her name. Uh, her sort of projectile attack was also a musical note. Just another example of how other mermaid media takes inspiration and cues from The Little Mermaid Story by Hans Christian Hansen. Um, so what's the deal here? Yeah, my red flashy thing is pretty much overlapping that X. So... What's the dealio? Oh, you swim down into the rock wall. Hidden entrance. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so here's the first boss. The lava monster. Now, the manual has this to say about the lava monster. Quote, The lava monster is not having a good day. <laughs> and no, it doesn't seem like it is. Spitting hot lava, and I do not mean that metaphorically. Spitting hot fire, I guess, is the expression usually. Anyway, this kind of reminds me of. I, I've just sort of binged the last half of the third season of the animated series this morning. And there's one where the Sharkanians have a magic geode and they break it open. And there's a powerful monster inside, or at least. Uh, Emperor Shaga wishes for a powerful monster to come out. And it looks a little bit like what that lava monster looked like, but you know, it's a bit generic. So that's level one. 
What's the time? Yeah, we're making good time. That's good. So the sunken ship, one of Ariel's favorite places to visit is sunken ships because there's lots of opportunity to find human thingamajiggers and watchmakots. I enjoy that in the animated series, for most of it, she hasn't met Scuttle until she does in a season three episode. Uh, so she doesn't have these sort of weird fantastical made up names for the, the human treasures that she finds. So she calls a lot of stuff uh, a variation on thingamajigger. So she calls a harp a stringamajigger and she calls a shiny golden goblet a, a shimmermajigger and a telescope she calls a bigger majigger because it makes things bigger when you look at them. Um, of course, there's an episode in series two. It's the one where she actually meets Hans Christian Andersen in a submarine, <laughs> um, thus inspiring the story of The Little Mermaid, uh, where it introduces a, a new character called Archimedes, a, a mermaid who is an expert on human stuff. And then he never appears again, and then she meets Scuttle later. And he's, he's so much more knowledgeable about actual uh, human matters. Uh, and yet, he just kind of disappears after that one episode. Voiced by Rod McEwen. That was a weird graphical effect on the eel there. Um, yeah. Gosh, the slowdown is serious. When you attack a skeleton, it breaks into bones, and those bones, all the little pieces, can still hurt you. Um, I don't know if if you ever played Cleaver's Kill in Donkey Kong Country 2, and then when you beat the boss Cleaver, uh, it kind of explodes into a million little pieces. Did you ever think that you had to avoid those pieces, lest you be destroyed? <laughs> yeah, in this case, you do have to avoid the leftovers. Let's not go up there if that skeleton's going to be there. I'm keeping an eye on my health now. Let's have a look at the map. Ah, we haven't completely explored this ship. Got to go back down and to the left. Maybe there'll be another treasure chest with some health in it. I'm not sure where Scuttle's shop is. I think it shows up on the map in easy mode. Whoops, I accidentally used a star there. Or maybe two. Which instantly destroyed the skeleton, but of course it still leaves all the pieces behind, unfortunately. Um, let me just see something here. <laughs> Hidden entrances. Gibbon says, Iconic Little Mermaid scene, Ariel versus the lava monster. Yeah, well, to be honest, I feel like it's something that would fit in the cartoon pretty well. That, that goes a lot of strange places. Ah, oh, that used up my continue. I have to not get hit by the flying shards, but there's no refills of health over here, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff happens in the cartoon. And even crazier stuff in the comics that, as I said, were sort of inspired by it in a lot of ways. Um, I made a short list of things that I'd noticed in comics that seemed pretty crazy for the Little Mermaid universe. Um, there's a... There was one particular comic line. I don't remember the name of the line, but it was out in the UK. Um, there's, the, there's that blessed health up, thank you. Um, yeah, and this was pretty long running, it had a lot of shorter stories in it. And in one of them, a UFO arrives under the sea and there are alien mermaids from outer space in there. <laughs> and we saw the sort of fish wearing sheets in the NES game. But there, as I said last week, there is a literal ghost that appears in those comics as well. Now, I haven't read most of them in English, but um, the fan site that I've mentioned a few times already, Daring to Dream, uh, an excellent Little Mermaid resource and sort of review site, listing of merchandise and stuff. Um, it has scans of a ton of comics, um, including this UK one. And then I noticed uh, they've got a lot more of a Russian language one. But by, by checking the, the Russian one, it had a sort of reprint of one of the UK ones um, with translation into Russian. So I think it originated in the UK probably, and then maybe it was translated into other European languages for distribution there. Um, so 
there's a lot of stuff that we can't read in English, unfortunately, but it's out there. You know what? Let's get a Sebastian ready. So if we're about to die, we can use it, and then we'll find Scuttle's shop to refill our health. So, there we go. Can't neglect the polyps on our way, I suppose. Oh, the speed is blistering. I figured Sh Scuttle would be up near the top of the screen, probably. But I don't see him. Could be hiding out. Here he is. Great. Let's get that health refill. And that's pretty much all we can afford. That's as good as an extra life if you do it at the right time, right? Alright. Ooh, key. Yoink. Haven't used many of those. Um, yeah, so there is a literal ghost in the comics, in the UK comics, as well as aliens. And living dinosaurs, um, there's two separate ones. One where they go to Loch Ness, the Loch Ness, um, and meet the Loch Ness monster, which is like a... Not quite a plesiosaur, but something like that. Is that a different music track? So the map has its own track. And then this screen has a different track. And I don't remember whether this is a different one to the track we had on the previous level for the, this menu screen. If it is, that's pretty impressive to have so much music packed into this game. Um, yeah, so there are dinosaurs in the animated series. One of the last episodes, they find them, but they're all frozen, and they they thaw them out, and then they go crazy. And then Ariel gets chased by, like, a T-Rex that's just running along under the ocean. This is another example of the movie and show ignoring different animals' needs for air. <laughs> so mammals and reptiles, you know, I'm pretty sure they can't... We had a bit of confusion last week where I didn't or I didn't know which animals exactly had gills or could breathe underwater. But yeah, I'm pretty sure all mammals and reptiles have to surface for air. Dinosaurs definitely cannot just run around on the bottom of the water uh, and not worry about air at all. But hey, that was needed for the peril of the episode, I guess. You could have had mosasaurs and stuff, but I don't know. Kids are familiar with the, the big name dinosaurs, so there was a stegosaur and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, shooting the bones doesn't actually deal with them. That's unfortunate. You, you just have to avoid them until they disappear. Mm, my song does not have the best range either. Okay, let's use one of our many keys. Quick health up. Thank you. Run away. Oh, another scuttle. Well, we don't actually need it right now. And I've got... Plenty of fish friends, I think. So let's just slip on down here. Um, so yeah, I guess my point in all that was that I don't think the skeletons would be out of place. You know what? This is the perfect time to use Sebastian. I don't think the skeletons would be out of place in the comics universe. Um, but in the show universe, it was a teensy bit more grounded even though you had things like the insubstantial sorceress character did i still lose health there what happened there hang on a second let's see how this works sebastian help me out here so that instantly killed the skeleton on the screen and then sebastian disappeared so i guess it doesn't make you he doesn't make you invincible hmm oh well i should be able to get by from here yeah this those doors didn't spawn skeletons that time they spawned urchins a little easier to deal with and not urchin the character from the animated series who showed up a lot i would have liked to see gabriella more now that i've finished it she's only in two episodes she is the deaf mute um mermaid who is based on a fan of the show sadly passed away um and in tribute they made a character in the show that's a homage to her. All right, damage boost, damage boost. Now I'm pretty sure that 
when I enter the boss arena, I have full health again, because that seems to be what happened last time. Yeah. Swim into that empty ship hole. Yeah, there you go, full health. So, it's the shark boss who <laughs> releases smaller sharks out of its mouth. Hang on a second, is this like the dogs that have bees in their mouth and when they bark they shoot bees at you? This is a shark with smaller sharks in its mouth that is then <laughs> spitting them out at me. That's kind of ridiculous. Okay, let's use our stars. Yeah, I think that was a solid hit. Yeah. Oi, oi, oi. Sharks are quick. And again, my the low range of my attack is kind of troubling, but that's all right. Yeah, there's my extra life gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's going on? That was it? Cool. So that used up a life and... Oh, all my stars, but that's okay. Whatever. We don't need them. <laughs> Given saying that's wild. Asking, are there any caveman mermaids? Hmm. You know, I can't rule them out of being in that UK comic because there was so much crazy stuff in there and I don't remember some of it, but I'm gonna say no. I don't think there were any caveman mermaids. Oh, my stream has stopped again. I hate when that happens. Hmm. My own view of my stream going on kind of crashes sometimes. So this screen is a little smaller, actually. This is the Atlantis stage, confirming that Atlantis exists separately to Atlantica. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think the aliens was the weirdest, dumbest thing that happened. So here we are in Atlantis. Ah, and all these walls are solid, so we have to make our way around. Now in this stage we have to watch out for statues, which somehow come to life. But what does it say that there's statues of humans in Atlantis? Okay, here's my theory. The humans in ancient Atlantis had magic. When their city sunk, they transformed themselves into mermaids. The current mermaids founded Atlantica, as well as many other mermaid civilizations as seen in the show and comics. Um, but Atlantica, uh, it, it in, um, was, you know, uh, more than all of them was basing its name directly on Atlantis, but they've forgotten that now. Um... And having forgotten their human origins, despite having a vast library of their history, uh, as seen again in certain <laughs> of these spin off media, um, yeah, they became eventually fearful of humans. Most likely for good reason. Uh, might as well use a digger fish when we have a chance, right? Let's, let's try and f see if this track is any different oh that's a good point actually given uh, Disney's Atlantis there is a movie about Atlantis by Disney um, I don't know if they're connected in universe um, now given is annoyed that the animated series of Atlantis didn't get off the ground because they might have eventually done a little mermaid crossover episode <laughs> but it never happened oh Oh, every animal companion has their own little ditty. That's how the screen works. Didn't notice that before. I think I like the digger fish is best. Those wow notes. Nice Mega Drive sound chip business. Oops. Ah. That dang clam, man. 
Oh yeah, whoops, I was hitting the wrong button. I was hitting the star button and I have no stars. A normal here is enough to take that out. I always just get a 200 from that. I don't know, it doesn't seem that worth it, you know? Net gain of 50. Ah, should not have backtracked, stupid clams. Yeah, so those statues throw discuses at you and then the archer statues pop up and shoot arrows at you. It's very rude, I must say. Do not appreciate it. Okay, give me that money. Is only 150. Oh well. Health's good too. Quick check of the map. And right, interesting. So I need to go back a bit. So I'm here. Um yeah, so I feel like I'm very well brushed up on Little Mermaid lore at this point. Well, having said that, I still haven't experienced the two more prominent pieces of additional media. What the heck is this? Why did I lose so much health? Did that arrow just do so much damage and then it just drains out of you like Mother? Well, Mother 2 and 3 anyway. Where a, dam a hit will do a bunch of damage, but it'll slowly tick its way down. Only, I don't know how I would reverse it in this case, if I got to a health pickup, I guess. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Little Mermaid 2, the director video sequel, or the prequel, Ariel's Beginning, I think it's called, uh, uh, an even later director video film. Um, but that's because I'm watching everything in chronological order, as well as reading the comics. All right, one polyp left, where is it exactly? Most of them, yeah, and then there's a whole more area of the map to traverse with no polyps, but presumably more dangers and treasures, perhaps. All right, ta-da. So yeah, I don't know where this fits in, this this particular game fits into the continuity either. We established last week that, oh, you see that? I knocked the head and arm off the statue, very nice. Now, if I... If I um, consulted the map, I wouldn't have to. Ooh, wouldn't have to stumble around. But maybe that's part of the experience. Let's stumble a little bit at least. Um, yeah. So the NES game by Capcom, uh, we established was an alternate continuity where sort of the events of that game where Ariel takes over the uh, Ursula takes over the ocean and Ariel has to go and stop her on her own. Um, and goes to all these different places. That replaces the climax of the film, essentially, with the the wedding plot and everything, and, Ar and Ursula disguising herself as a human, and all that stuff. Didn't happen in the NES game continuity. <laughs> but as for this one, it's a little bit harder to tell. There's really no involvement of uh, Eric in the human world at all. So... If anything, it would actually fit well in the context of the animated series and the comics, which are basically all set before the movie. They all are. Yeah, they definitely are. Um, there's a few occasional appearances by Eric um, pre-meeting Ariel. In fact, <laughs> one thing I'll point out is that the early Peter David miniseries, a limited series from Disney Comics, and a later comic, what's the provenance of the later comic? Was it Acclaim Publishing or something? Um, yeah, there's another one. It's on Daring to Dream, you can find it. It's like a double-sided storybook comic thing where half of it tells Ariel's side of the story and half of it Eric's, and they briefly cross over. But anyway, these two separate comics, years apart in publishing, um, tell very different stories about something that's briefly mentioned in the film which is Eric meeting and rejecting the princess of Glowerhaven as a potential uh, uh, marriage partner that Grimsby or, or, or I guess Eric's parents implied uh, are trying to set him up with they don't really mention his parents at all ever I wonder if they come up in the sequel that'd be interesting to find out so why did I not find this entrance down here 
Oh, it's just here. <laughs> it's like that dip in the ground. Great. Pretty, pretty well hidden. All right. So in this boss, what is this? There's other statues around. Oh, right, Medusa. I forgot. Yeah, the the hair, the snake hair. In this in this case, quote unquote Medusa, who in the manual says is having a bad hair day, um, is like a big statue head with some snakes popping out. So I guess I don't know. To me, it just it's just looks like it's a big statue head, and there's some snakes living in it. It's not necessarily anything mythological about it, but you could say. This is, I don't know, the corpse of Medusa after she got turned to stone. And there's still some snakes left over. Alright, I'm going to load my state. I'm going to see if I can mash my way through this boss fight without losing a life. Because I believe I determined in my last stream playing this game that this was good technique. You don't try and avoid stuff, you just run in and you mash and you get through it. <laughs> Yeah, Justice for Medusa. You should check out... Well, I did a stream where I played as Monster Ladies, and there are a few Medusa-themed games on itch that are interesting. Hang on a second, that statue just blinked! It's alive, even though its head is split open. That's bizarre. There we go, I told you mashing was the, the key. Cool. Oh boy. Level 4, The Cave, the final level, in fact. 40 minutes in. Um, big cave. Big, big cave. So, ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Gibbon is pointing out you're forgetting the most important piece of expanded media. Poor unfortunate soul, a tale of the sea witch. I joke, the book is not good, lol. Yeah, this is supposedly like the prequel story of Ursula from her perspective. Um, yeah, and apparently it contradicts a bunch of stuff. Uh, but there's some interesting things in there. I don't know. I'm not going to read it. It's a book. I'm only interested in visual media. Uh, but Tonya's here. Welcome, Tonya. Tonya's saying, poor Medusa, but beautiful graphics. Um, the Mega Drive Mini needed more Disney games. And also, yeah, this is a short game. Yeah, it is. But that's okay. Um, we're here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> Uh, but Given says that the, the, the aforementioned book does reveal that Ursula is Triton's long-lost sister who grew up as the adopted daughter of a fisherman after being hauled in as part of a catch and grows up as Vanessa amongst the humans. Until, of course, she's exposed. The villagers kill her father in the process of trying to get at her and she develops a hatred of humans. Huh. She seemed indifferent to humans in the movie, to be honest. But there's a sort of, a, that, like I said, that contradicts things. In the in the show, the animated series, um, I think it's the episode Heroes where they meet Apollo, the, uh, the big old hero of Atlantica, who was in a war against the octopus people. And in the flashback, which is before any of the mermaid princesses are born, they're having this battle with the octopus people and Ursula is there and she's clearly a member of that race and she's provided them all with their own magical tridents or, or one of them she she gives them more in the in the present timeline um yeah but it's it's silly that Ursula doesn't show up in the third movie it would have been a good chance to establish that backstory the other two um movies have like other sea witches who are related to Ursula or something I think um, let me see. Oh, and then Gibbon says that after that is when Triton shows up and mermaid racism against octopuses comes into play. <laughs> I don't understand how the sister of a merf, a merman, as um, <laughs> Triton calls them. He doesn't say merman, he says merman. Uh, that's, oh, what's his name? Kenneth Strong or something? Anyway, yeah. That's the way he says it, that's fine. But anyway, um, yeah, fishtail people, octopus tail people can be siblings? Well, whatever, it's all magic anyway. I was talking to my spouse about this, and her theory is that uh, mer people are mammals completely, and the fishtails is just sort of a coincidence, an accident, sort of convergent evolution thing, where they develop this separately. 
And convergent evolution does happen, and it's a really interesting phenomenon. Um, you can see it in things like a platypus having a, a bill and webbed feet like a duck. That it, it just developed those to suit its environment. Um, it's not because it's some kind of magical duck hybrid. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I did play on stream during the Transforming Into Dolphins showcase, <laughs> uh, the game Evo Search for Eden on the SNES. And that would support this theory as a completely unrelated piece of media, but it has support for it in that you evolved into different life forms. And at some point, you know, you're a mammal, but then you can return, you have the option of returning to the sea and becoming a kind of pinniped seal type thing. And then you go from there to a dolphin type creature. And then you go from dolphin to mermaid. So I think this is kind of plausible if you take this theory. Oh, no dig fish, that's too bad. I'll have to go it alone, no digging up. And I hope I find Scuttle because yeah, low on health, two continues, so that's okay. Maybe I'll just buy another continue before I get to the boss fight and we'll be golden. Um, yeah, so that was really cool actually. It was good to be reminded of Evo. <laughs> um, and it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's plausible. If you actually look, yeah, I, I, I was checking for this when watching these other mermaid, um, Little Mermaid adaptations and also the animated series. Look at the way that Ariel swims, okay? Um, when she's swimming to the side, her tail is going up and down and her fins are aligned perpendicular to her body, right? Or parallel, I don't know, whatever. They're, they're flat um, from the top, right? This is exactly the way that a dolphin or cetacean's body is arranged. If they actually were part fish, you know, literally, then you would expect their tail to go from side to side. A fish's tail is aligned vertically um, along the axis of their body. But that's not how mermaids' um, bodies look, and it's not how they swim. They swim as if they're, well, as if they're humans in a, legs, in a fishtail suit, um, pumping their legs up and down. And, um, that's, that's the way it is, um, which is pretty interesting. So, you know, mermaids are clearly magic. They can breathe underwater somehow. They can, you know, talk to animals and stuff. But um, yeah, the fact that they're part mammal, part fish, um, bears some consideration. Okay, so continue and a bit of health, that'll be good. Let's get one digger fish in case. And we can leave it at that, I think. Okay, now is the next passage, this one. There we go. Okay, now I can loop around the bottom, avoid those volcanic eruptions, which were in the NES game as well. We had a cave with volcanoes spitting rocks, but that might be an example of convergent evolution in this case, in game design. Um, just a pause for a brief second here. Uh, Tonya asking if they made more of those books for other villains. I believe they did. Um, and what was the plot for the book? Um, I don't know if the top of my head, maybe Given will answer that, but you could probably look it up easily enough. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like, oh, it's, I guess it's Maleficent style, you know, Ursula's tragic backstory and why she's evil. Um, Given says, I think they're half siblings. Okay. And the book actually references the prequel movie. That's interesting. That's good to know. Triton's wife, Athena, was one of the only people who was nice to Ursula. And after her death, nobody's around to stop her from being driven out of the kingdom. And yes, Tanya, I believe that's correct. The villain of Little Mermaid 2 was Ursula's sister. But I haven't got there myself yet. All right, here's where Flounder comes in. I, I swam right past this before, but we do need to get in here. Yes, we're covering a lot of Little Mermaid lore here today, so that's cool. But I want to hear uh, your guys' opinions on the whole mermaid 
biology and physiology thing. Are they mammals? How magic are they exactly? Why are their tails fish tails if they flop up and down instead of side to side? Um, I'll sneak back through there, go around. Shouldn't have missed that so early on in the level. There we go, took a little hit, but that's alright. Hopefully this drops a heart. No heart. But we can probably buy one on our next trip through Scuttle's place. Coolie O. So, um, while while you're pondering that question, I'll a brief note here about Blue Sky. Um, ugh. Curse you. So among the people who worked on this game, um, a prominent role was actually filled by a, wom a woman, which was really nice. Um, it's also interesting to see how involved women were in the production of the comic too, um, with the writing process and such. Okay, let's queue up a Sebastian in case I run into a shark or something. Probably should buy more stars when I go see Scuttle again. Um, but yeah, in this case, uh, oh boy, oh my gosh, that was tense. Now where was Scott's shop? <laughs> yeah, on this on this game, um, we had a woman named Barbara Michalek, who was responsible for game design as well as one of the programmers on the team. So that's really cool, and a very prominent role there. Which is always good to see, especially on a project that involves a female character as the lead. So that's nice. Oh, heart. Yes. Good, good, good. And that's a full refill. That's very nice. Alright, hold on. I feel like I should be more careful about where I'm going. Oh yeah, see? I would have missed that polyp in this passage. Um, among the other people who worked on it was, oh no, I should tell you actually, Barbara Michalek's um, work, uh, you might have heard of the Sega 1981 shooter arc in the arcades called Astro Blaster. She was the co-designer and programmer on that as well. So that's a very kind of important part of gaming history right there. That's a very early game and she was... Um, instrumental in its creation. One of two co-designers and co-programmers. Um, but yeah, let me see. Uh, the other name that stood out to me in the credits was Dana Christensen, who is a, is a guy. I, I was a bit fooled at first by the name, but guys can be called Dana. Um, but yeah, he worked on um, another game that I played on stream, Ms. Pac-Man Maze Madness. So he was artist on this and also general design on on that uh, Pac-Man game. Which is like Ms. Pac-Man's only other like lead role outside of her debut game, which was a an unofficial kind of um you know hack in its origin. Oh no, do I need Flounder to get through here? Hold on. Yeah, I need to get through here. And I need Flounder to do it. Alright, let's go back to find Scuttle. Dang. I should have stocked up. No, I think it was back. No, not there. Ah. This round I'm going to need another health. Help me out, Scuttle. Full health, one flounder, make it two. Some stars. Yeah, let's load up on stars. Um... Okay. Save state. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, more info in the book from Gibbon. Um, everything that Gibbon has said so far about this book is just like the opening of the book. The series isn't actually about the villains. It stars some witch sisters who go around interacting with and being involved with all the villains' backstories somehow. Oh, that's kind of dumb. 
Um, the Ursula book is one of the weaker entries. And now to address the issue of the mermaids, they do have scales. Um, given guessing that they are monotremes, which are mostly mammals, but with some qualities of other species. So yeah, I mentioned the platypus before. The platypus and the two different species of echidna are the only three monotremes in existence. They're mammals, marsupials, um, who lay eggs instead of giving birth to live young like every other mammal does. Um, so that's actually, I think, another example of convergent evolution. Um, they're just kind of weird oddities that decided to lay eggs. Um, but then, you know, mammals are an offshoot of, of a reptile type thing eventually anyway, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that makes sense to me. And that's kind of what I was saying, I guess. The kind of, that mermaids sort of evolved from uh, sea mammals um, and then developed other kinds of traits. Uh, it's not even about Ursula, says Tonya. Most of the rest of the books in the series primarily focus on the title villain, but the Ursula book is just bad. <laughs> wow. Okay, I definitely won't read it then. Mm. Alright, let's get this done. Uh, nope. Immediately swim into the wrong passage. Hey, go away. Okay, so it was over here, right? Yes. Wait a minute. Did the rocks despawn? Because there were other sprites around? Because I'm pretty sure I was blocked here before. And that's why I went to get flounder. But now I swim up and it's just wide open. Crazy. Just crazy. Oh, another late game scuttle here. And where's the exit? It's here. It's just past scuttle. Okay. <laughs> just swim into the wall. Alright, here we go. There's, there's, so there's Triton in polyp form, which is something that you see in the movie briefly. Um, after Ursula gets his crown and trident. And here is Ursula herself. Huge sprite. Great to look at. Tentacles, laser beams shooting everywhere. But we have lots of health. Oh, or at least we have two continues. We have lots of stars, so I'm going to mash some stars. Going to get up in her face. Try not to take constant damage from contact. <laughs> If I can, maybe just sit out of range here and sing right into her face. There we go. Is that it? Cool. So that's how you beat bosses in Ariel the Little Mermaid, if you were wondering. Oh, um, I suppose it wants me to... There we go. Triton is free. And that's a very strange mermaid. It kind of looks like some kind of pride flag. There's a lot of them, so I'm not sure which one, but... Whoa, sorry. Congratulations, you have defeated Ursula. Yeah, unusual rainbow. Anyway, that's a really nice screen. I'm going to take a screenshot. Yeah, baby. Okay. So that's it. That's what you get. Um, is there a credit screen? It's got to be. I guess not. Maybe there's a secret way to get it? I don't know. So what's the time? Um, Alright, real quick. We'll do an easy try and run to try and see what the aerial polyp looks like is basically my goal here. Because, you know, I think playing as Triton's boring compared to playing as Ariel. But, you know, he can use his Trident. It's similar to Ariel's attack. I don't know if it has more range. Um... But yeah, fireballs, and then his special attack is oh, a laser similar to Ursula's, actually. So yeah, but but Triton has all the same abilities as, as Ariel. It's the the same game, just with a different sprite. Um, you have the same fish friends, um, even though I don't know if Flounder would be swimming around with Triton necessarily. But there you go. Dig of fish is a loyal subject, I suppose. Sebastian clearly would 
it would be swimming with the king. Now, do they want you to use Flounder there? Because I could bypass that. Actually, interesting thought. Are the polyps in all the same places? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, Tonya wondering if Triton has an alternate ending. I suppose we'll find out. Now, come on. What would Triton have to do with Scuttle? That's nuts. But yeah, you can see how easy mode starts you off with a lot more goodies. Got more money, more continues, and more items in general. Let me see. So this is the last stream of Mermaid, but I have more Little Mermaid games to play, so I'm going to keep playing through June anyway. I don't care. Um, which will include a Little Mermaid 2 game for PlayStation next week. Um, some games I won't be covering, but I'll just mention that I found them in my research. There's a Sega Pico game based on Little Mermaid. This was a sort of edutainment focused console by Sega. Sort of based on Mega Drive hardware, I believe but it had a sort of pen tablet controller, which was pretty interesting. And there were like nine grid uh, areas on the surface of it that would correspond to in-game stuff. And then most of the games that were released for it were like little activity center things with different mini games. There was an Echo Junior sort of game on there. It wasn't the same as the Echo Junior on the Mega Drive, but it was yeah, it was one of these typical Sega Pico things. Um, but yeah, there was also a Little Mermaid one, which kind of adapts the story of the film. Not dissimilar to the GBA game that I played last week, in that it's a series of mini, ga mini games that adapt the story of the film, essentially. So yeah, that's cool. But Pico emulation is really tricky because they can't really <laughs> replicate the, the pen... The touch sensitive pen tablet thing um, now my theory was that yeah there you go so I didn't need to swim directly to the boss door once those mermaids leave the screen from there um, that's it and you are straight into the boss and we know how to be bosses in this game and that's get up close and mash your heart out um, so another couple of little mermaid games that I found there are other sort of similar younger audience focused um, activity center kind of things for PC so one they'll be difficult to, to run on my computer but two they won't be as interesting I guess because I like playing action games whatever that's how it is so yeah mm, I had some notes here about other mermaid games that exist there's not many I played a bunch from Ichio last week, a uh, week before last, of course. Um, but yeah, Aquaria is the big one, of course. Naja doesn't have a fishtail, actually. She has like webbed feet, but the rest of her is quite fishy. She's got like fins on her face and stuff, all that kind of thing. But um, yeah, excellent game, really lovely. probably the best mermaid game that exists but if you're looking for other mermaid games your options are a bit slim i played mermaid madness which was on like commodore was it commodore it's definitely on the amstrad cpc and i think the zx spectrum as well you know all those kinds of mm, old 80s home computer console type things yeah, I didn't go up here. I played it during a stream I did a while back of games for those old 80 systems that starred uh, unconventional kind of protagonists who were women that wouldn't, wouldn't be considered conventionally attractive was the idea. So whether they were um, a bit more Rubenesque or perhaps they were elderly things that are not usually seen in conventionally attractive 
video game protagonist because you know usually when a woman is starring in a game she's hot for you know marketing reasons uh, get it through the wall yes my special weapon could hit the polyp through the wall that's lovely um, yeah so my main madness is really fun kind of silly flip screen kind of um, side scroller but you're swimming the whole time so up from here and let me see another one would be Aquaman there was an Aquaman game on the GameCube and I think other consoles of that generation yeah and he's not traditionally merfolk like because he just looks like a guy I guess his armor has scales on it or whatever But yeah, there's a there's an Aquaman game based on. Oh, you know, my memory is telling me that actually Peter David is a connection there from the Little Mermaid comics because he's he did a sort of transformative um, Aquaman run of comics at some point, and I think it's based on those. But that's a game that's set completely underwater where you're swimming around. It is a kind of third person, like brawler type thing. Um, so a bit unlike other mermaid games that exist. But it's definitely in that category, even though you're a merman, I guess. But here I am a merman in this game too. But anyway, um, let me see. The only other one that I could find worth mentioning, apart from a host of like puzzly games, hidden object games, visual novel games, um, there's a game called Dora the Explorer. Dora saves the mermaids, and I spent my I spent last night playing through the PS2 version and the DS version of Dora saves the mermaids which is based on a sort of TV movie of the same name. Can I get to Scuttle here? Yes, cool. He's hanging out in a corner. Just get that health and get out. Cool stuff. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't say it's the best example of a mermaid game. You spend three quarters of the game actually in human form until you regain the power of the magical crown and then wish yourself into a mermaid. Uh, but as I pointed out in a review that would have been published two hours ago, it's nice to have a game starring a woman of color as the protagonist because Dora is Latina and she teaches you some Spanish as part of the educational content of the show. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cute game, but obviously no challenge at all. It's designed for preschoolers. But yeah, the DS one is just a bunch of touchscreen and microphone mini games, which does let it kind of replicate that concept from the show where uh, the characters talk to you and you talk back, you being the toddler who is watching. Um, but the PS2 version has some mini games, yeah, and they're more boring than the DS ones. But it also has these sort of very basic 3D quote-unquote platformer traversal segments um, that are kind of relaxing, I found them. Very simple, but, um, you know, competently made. <laughs> and then in the fourth level, after you're a mermaid, it controls exactly the same, but hey, you're under the sea and you're a mermaid, so that's cool. <laughs> it gets points for that. Yeah, take that. Zap, zap, zap. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, yes, and of course, Evo Search for Eden, you play some mermaid for part of that. It's optional, but there it is. And let me see. In a similar vein to the Dora ones, there's a couple of Barbie games where Barbie, as in Mattel's uh, doll Barbie, who has a lot of cross-media 
in video games and such. Um, yeah, there's a couple of like Barbie video games. To be honest, I have no idea what they play like. I think they're mostly on PCs, on Windows. Oh man, are there fewer polyps on easy mode? There might be more on hard, in, in which case they might fill up the rest of the right hand, right side of this level. That's interesting. Now I'm regretting not playing difficult because there would have been more hashtag content in, um, in difficult mode. Yeah, I didn't think of that. It's a, it would be a simple way to increase the, or decrease the difficulty having more or fewer polyps to go after. I guess I'll save that for stream number three of this game coming sometime in the future. <laughs> uh, that might not happen. Yeah, that's it. We're done. With this level. Yeah, that's what I would assume they are. Tonya. Tonya saying, I, I think about the Barbie Mermaid games. Usually basic kitty point and clicks. Yeah. I would assume that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tanya brought up this morning the official... Uh, let me see if I can remember the names. Um, they're the final evolutions of the three Galar starters. I know Inteleon. I definitely know Inteleon thanks to being friends with Tonya. Uh, Garuki's final evolution is called Rillaboom. And Score Bunny's final is called Kicker Bunny. Flamey Rabbit Kicko. Uh, is it. Is it. I don't remember. No, I, I've lost it. I don't know what the rubber rabbit thing's called. But yeah, um, official plushes. Tonya is strongly debating getting the Intellion one, as well as a Gallard one. Well, didn't you say that Gallard... Oh, no, no. So what, what um, Tonya is saying is that the official plushes are uh, lackluster, substandard. So she's debating getting um, custom commissioned plushes, which sounds like it might be expensive. You know what, I have lots of continues. I'm gonna play on fast forward mode through this stage. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, where are we going? This way. I cannot deal with all this lava right now. Ha! Didn't need flounder. Just wiggle my way past the rock. Lovely. Okay. Good. I actually had to switch controllers at the last minute before I started the stream because my usual one is having issues. It's intermittently activating inputs, including the inputs that I have set up for rewind and fast forward, which is a real problem. You don't want that to happen when you don't want that to happen. Makes sense. Okay, now I've only got one continue left, so actually I better be a bit more careful. <laughs> Might have enough to go buy another one from Scuttle. Gosh, when you're not playing in fast forward, it suddenly seems really choppy and slow. <laughs> but it kind of is. But that's all right. I like the design of this game, the way it's laid out. You know, those straightforward action stages on the NES are all very well, but this reminds me of Echo and that's a really nice thing. <laughs> I really like that about it. Having a big map, trying to find your way around. Feels makes it feel more like a real space in the world rather than like an action stage that a game designer has set up for you. Oh. You know that rock moved itself before, I don't know how. I missed one over here, that was foolish of me. There you go. So that'll be up for the boss. 
<laughs> fast forward is satisfying says Tonya but yeah like more expensive for sure for a custom plush but then it could be Professor Intellion and Chairman Anton oh yeah that's a very good point you can get them to do whatever you want it doesn't have to be the basic thing you could get custom plushes all of your OCs that would be awesome oh and the name of the the rabbit thing the soccer playing rabbit who kicks a rock made of fire um, is Cinderace thank you for the input Oh yeah, I forgot that the boss arenas have their own little map on that screen too. And it's very small, obviously. <gasps> it's Ariel as a polyp. There you go. This is what I wanted to see. This is the reason I played as Triton. And she keeps the red hair. Wow. That's really interesting. There you go. Cool. So it was all worth it. <laughs> all right. Get owned, Ursula. Get super owned. Let's go. So that low kind of rumbling groan sound is when I take damage and the sort of ding or like bang sound is when I think the enemy is taking damage. I think, might be the other way around. There we go. Used our last continue, but that's the end of the game. Ask Triton, we'll see if the end screen is any different. Yes, the alternate ending for this story. Yeah, there you go. Ariel is a pulp. Oh, I guess you have to touch her. That's right. I tried attacking in the other one. Nope, same screen. Same rainbow. There you go. But thank you, Blue Sky Software. I really enjoy this game. Um, so there's your run-throughs with Ariel and Triton. Oh, gosh. I want to do hard now. Maybe I'll do hard on the other version. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now is play... Um, the port, the 8-bit port, um, what I'll do real quick is show you what the Game Gear one looks like, because the Master System is exactly the same, but it just has a bigger screen, so this is what this is like, quite cramped and uncomfortable, um, but I'm going to swap you over real quick, Master System... Um, yeah, so on this screen, I guess we have the Ariel and Triton option. Let's see what Triton's 8-bit sprite looks like. Normal, challenging, and easy. So it's not called easy, medium, difficult. It's easy, normal, and challenging. And I assume the conditions are similar. But I don't want to spend forever on it. So, hmm, what's time? So this is what Triton looks like in 8-bit. Pew! The fireballs look different. That's interesting. But yeah, that's not why we're here. We're here for Ariel, my friends. So that's what we're doing. Um, Yeah, let's go challenging. Let's do it. Give ourselves a challenge. But yeah, look how, this, how cool this looks. This is the master system. And this is my magical singing voice. It goes in a straight line in this version, unlike the sort of diverting... Um, spray of projectiles that we had on the Mega Drive. Now what's that? We have a different system here. Four hearts, I guess that would be continues, and a life bar that's vertically oriented for some reason. Even though it doesn't need to be. And we only have the two buttons, don't we? Oh, did you see Sebastian briefly? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got... Oh, look at that! Flanders Pink! He looks like the girl flounder who appears in uh, one episode. I think it's Electric City when they go to a nightclub and flounder meets a girl of his species, which is supposedly guppy, although he takes that as an insult when Ariel calls him that. Um, flounder is a name. He was known as guppy number 34, and you find this out in the episode Evil Manta. Is it called Evil Manta? It's the one that introduces the Evil Manta in the show. Uh, voiced by Tim Curry in another excellent uh, campy voice role for him. Um, but yeah, there's a flashback in that to like a really young, scrawny Ariel and when Flounder is like tiny and cute and um, shows how they first met and became friends. And Ariel gave him his name. Okay, so that S is Scuttle in a completely different place. So 
when I first played this, I kind of wrote it off as being too similar to the Mega Drive one, but really that was unlike me. I should have looked closer. What I wanted to do was do an overview of all the other Mermaid games, I guess, during that stream. But this time, I want to spend more time on the 8-bit port and see what's different about it. So we have no special things, but we also have no currency. Um, so we can't afford anything starting out because it's unchallenging, of course. It's not going to give you very much to start with. So we have our B button and our A button. Or button 1 and button 2, I think. Alright, that was a hit. Have to be, I have to be careful, but also I think we're not as relentlessly getting ambushed by enemies all the time in this version, you know, possibly due to sprite limitations and such, but that's fine. How do I even get out of here without getting hit by that eel? Okay, just sneak out like that, that's good. I do like Ariel's little sprite here. It's obviously a lot less detailed, but um, it's still cool. Now, what am I doing? Do we have a map? We do. Um, there's a way to, yeah. You hit that button, I don't know if it's one or two, but after you open the menu, yeah, much smaller level, but a similar kind of setup, different level design. It's very interesting. Tim Curry was great in it, says Tom Young. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, yeah, the, the show had some fun alternate villains. The lobster mobster shows up a lot, but he's silly and fun. Um, and yeah, Evil Manta. Very on-the-nose name, but the final episode of the show, they introduce Evil Manta's son, who is not so evil, and Ariel makes friends with him. Which, if you think about it, is kind of rehashing the urchin plot <laughs> from earlier in the show, but because, like, he gets taken in by the lobster mobster and she has to convince him not to be evil as well. Um, but hey, it's a fun episode. Yeah, give me that. No, 50. Terrible. And I'm not convinced that challenging actually puts more polyps on the Master System version. I could have easily checked, actually, <laughs> just by starting a quick run on Mega Drive, but I didn't do it. Because I'm dumb. Oh well. That's okay. I feel like the pace of this one is a little bit more deliberate, which makes um, makes it a bit easier to deal with the challenging difficulty. Yikes, these sharks are tough. That took a lot of hits. But that's okay. The level's not long. Shark respawned before I even left the screen. Very rude. Okay, so I have lots of keys, but not a whole lot of treasure. And only one dig of fish. Should I use it? I guess I should. These eels just pop out of nowhere. Hey, buddy. Go away. Okay, let's bring out... Are you serious? The Another eel? No, I can't stop to dig. There's too many eels ambushing me all the time. Okay, that's right, on challenging mode, if this is the same, then there won't be a marker on the map, which is going to make this a bit more frustrating. Okay, there we go. <gasps> My health didn't get refilled in the boss room! That's tragic. That's devastating, in fact. So I'm going to have to use some continues here. I can't deal with that. I might not actually finish this. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, we just have to be more careful is all. I'll seek out some more treasure chests in this level. Yeah, still five polyps. So that's the maximum that there are, it seems, in this version. 100. Jeez, we'll never afford another continue at this rate. I just have to be more judicious with the rewind button. Hey! That skeleton looks amazing. That looks so much cooler than the Mega Drive one. I like it. Very jaunty. Yes, and they don't explode into bones. Beautiful. You know what I should test? If there's different jingles on there. No, 
No, there's no like selection. Hang on, how do I pick different animal friends? I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, we should check this. Wow, it's just all one ship on this. Yeah, that's very different. I didn't give this 8-bit port enough credit last time, clearly. Look at this. Clearly, you know, the differences in them in the, for the most part are just that the game is more limited in scope. But that's cool. That's still interesting. Okay. Hang on a second. Uh, bottom right corner. Okay. You know, I don't like that the enemies take so many hits when you can only have one on screen at a time. <laughs> and they're kind of slower. But that's okay. Like I said, it's a slower paced game on 8-bit systems here. And I do appreciate how much bigger the screen is for the Master System version. Which again, exclusive to Brazil. But there doesn't appear to be... Yeah, the few English words in the text, treasure and such, um, are still in English, not Portuguese, Brazilian. So you don't even have to worry about that. Even if, even if they were, it wouldn't be a, much of a barrier, to be honest. All right, now I'm going to need Flam to get through here, which means I actually need to figure out how this system works. Um, how to select... Mm, hold on a second. I had the manual. I'm going to go find the manual. I think I deleted the manual. Oh no, I think I emptied my trash. Oh boy. That's bad. Why did I think I was such an expert? Okay, the manuals are on Sega Retro. SegaRetro.org slash Ariel the Little Mermaid. We have scans, all ready to go. Cover art, information, manuals. While I'm at it, um, Tonya says, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tonya acknowledging that the statement earlier was confusing. Um, what I thought they were saying was that Tim Curry was great in it, meaning the Little Mermaid TV show. But what Tonya was actually saying was Tim Curry was great in it, Stephen King's it. <laughs> All right. Um, cycle sleep choices, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's right. I remember now. There's an interesting system with this one. So I'll put you back on. Game is here. Right. So it's not the menu screen. The menu screen just shows you what you've got. Now you have button one and button two. Holding down button one and then pushing up will change between regular shot and normal and a special shot. But holding it and pressing left, down or right switches which animal companion is uh, going to be used. And Flounder is just swimming away. Great, thanks a lot Flounder, you jerk. Um, so if you wanna, yeah, you're holding it down and then letting it go will use that character. Uh, letting go of the button while you're holding the direction will use that character. So that's how you do it. Good stuff. But it didn't work. <laughs> so I tried to get Flounder to deal with this. Let's try it again. Why? First of all, why is Flounder pink? But also why is he appearing down there and then doing nothing? Maybe that's not the answer to this particular problem. Oh well, moving on. So Tonya <laughs> saying yes. Stephen King's it. But also, Evil Manta is great. Um, those TV shows are simple and sometimes contradict things. But I think the Little Mermaid one overall is great, says Tonya. And yeah, I definitely agree with that. Continuity is overrated. I still only have 150 treasure. 
900, so continues are cheaper here, but I can't actually buy health refills. That's really interesting. <laughs> oh boy, and such a low treasure account too. Hang on, did I accidentally buy a key just now? Because I really don't want to do that. Yeah, I was using... Yeah, I think button two just leaves the screen there. Okay, cool. Or, yeah, that's button two. I think that's how I've set it up. Ah. Um, yeah, apparently the Hercules show is weird and it retcons entire plot points in the movie. So, screw that, says Tonya. Yeah, they do try and work around it a bit. Like how Ariel sees Eric from behind, but doesn't really know it's him. So like they technically haven't met yet by the time of the movie, but it's kind of a fudge. But like, I always say that you shouldn't let continuity get in the way of good story. So I enjoy the shows and all the different things that they do. Whoa, that was odd. Okay, so we're back down and to the right. Cool. Oh, the eel respawned while it was on the map screen. That hardly seems fair. Um, let me see. Oh, okay, so here's an area where Flander would definitely help. So I guess that other floor wasn't a pushable floor. I kind of assumed it was, but just that they look different in this game, but I guess not. Um, this is definitely a boulder of the type that Flander will remove, and there you go. Thank you, Flander. Okie dokie. It's the last one. And an S, again, this is challenging. We do not know where the exit is, but if I can deal with this. Yeah, you get a lot less treasure in this version, don't you? Excellent. Ooh, lovely gem. 50. Oh, it looked lovelier than that. Hmm, okay. So where was, would it likely be? Oh my gosh, it could be anywhere. This is insane. Maybe that dark spot is it. On the 16-bit version, it was in the middle between shipwrecks on a fallen bit of hold. Nope, that's not it. So, where could it be? <laughs> oh my gosh. I shouldn't have picked challenging, I'm an idiot. Ah, oh, maybe that's the boss arena. It's actually on the same map this time. You see that? I reckon that that one like floor tile that I was trying to move, I reckon that's disappeared now that I've found all the polyps. You see how it's set up with the holes in the wall on the right side? Yeah, the shark's going to come out of there. That's interesting. That's cool. Um, and it's different. It's very different to the Mega Drive version with the boss arena being incorporated into the level itself. That is cool. Very cool. Okay. Um... So, yeah, Tonya's talking about the Aladdin animated series. She likes that one the most since at least that is a continuation of the movie and not a prequel that has to either change things or keep the status quo. Yeah, I would agree with that. See, here you go. Free and clear to get into that room. Um, Brazil is very big on Seeger, if I recall right. Yes, you're, co you're exactly correct. What do I think of the Brazilian soccer game meme? I've never seen that before. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Um... But yeah, like the the master system lived on in Brazil long after it left other regions. Um, in the Little Mermaid's case, many of the contradictions were from later movies, so it's the director video sequel movie's fault and not the show. Indeed, indeed. Or else you are like Pokemon, which canonizes alternate universes and ruins everything, says Tonya. <laughs> Duh, I'm Giovanni who hops between universes. Shut up. <laughs> Thank God Sword and Shield didn't continue that nonsense. Having said that, Kingdom Hearts is clearly an alternate universe. Yeah, I that that makes it really easy to ignore, luckily. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, we're getting hammered here, so let's get Sebastian in here to help. Sebastian. What? Um, I can't use the animal friends in the boss room. That's new. Great. I can change my shot, but I don't have any charges of my special shot. I should buy one at least at some point and see what it looks like in this version. 
Um, but yeah, this is the boss here. We don't have the shark coming out of the background. We just have these two sharks running around, I guess. So yeah, it's a bit harder to deal with than the regular boss because it moves around a lot. But we can afford to spend a continue if we need to. Mm. And I do. Oh, there we go. One down. Challenging really is challenging. Come on, Sharky. I love the chip tunes too, by the way. The Mega Drive sound font is uh, <laughs> divisive. <laughs> um, it's good if you use it well, but it's easy to do badly. Um, so I think things like these more chippy tunes for the, the Game Gear and the Master System age better. Um, so that's my opinion on that. I think Echo does a really great job with the Mega Drive um, sounds, but there's a lot of cross-platform stuff that does really badly. Oh my gosh! Instant Archer. Very rude. Hey. Okay, so in this version they only do the one little bar. That's nice. <laughs> That's a little more friendly. But yeah, we're gonna just avoid that, I think, because, you know, what's the point in killing enemies? They respawn in this game anyway. This looks nice, though. Alright, um... Show me El Mapo. And Astora says, if you want to see the map, you have to shout map. Map! And I'm going to be cheating as much as I can to survive. The last thing I want to do is lose progress. <gasps> Pearl. 200. Nice. Very nice. So we do need to find Scuttle at some point. Keep an eye out for that letter S, people. Only 50 again. Terrible. Oh yeah, let's use Diggerfish now that I know how. Actually, we'll deal with the statue first. Hey, you. Stop it. I said... <laughs> no damaged statues in this version, it just falls off the screen. Alright, let's go. Yes. Dig a fish. Hey, where are you going? Okay, that was very rude. Let's try going lower. Stop it! Um, it spawned above me that time. On top of me? Below me. Okay. Bit lower, please. It's like it doesn't want to go any higher than this. But then when I do, it just swims away. What if I put it further to the right? Ah, come on, I hate you. Some friend that guy turned out to be, gosh. Ugh. Right. There's a damaged statue, pre-damaged. But yeah, these archers are really nasty. Ooh, let's go. Okay. Oh my gosh, Tiny Man's chatting so much. <laughs> That's good though. I'm, I'm glad to have the company and have something to read. Uh, now they're saying that they hate Sonic 2 on Master System. I think that was Game Gear only, actually. But there are fan-made ports. All right, what were I going to... Yeah, I was going to buy one of these. At least one. But gosh, I have so little money. Maybe if I save up, I can eventually get one more continue. I guess that's what I'll aim for. But for now, I'm going to try this on the next boss. My one special shot. The discus really tracks you well in this version. Um, but yeah, Sonic 2 uh, 8-bit has the worst difficulty. Um, Tonya made it to... Ooh, a heart! Wow, that's really valuable, actually. I found an extra continue in a treasure chest. That's lovely. Amazing. And I'm out of keys. I see, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, but Tonya's saying, made it to Chapter 7 on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door today. And that'll be it for today. Enjoying this playthrough. Forgot how good this game was. I honestly thought it was overrated and people were exaggerating it. I 
still think that actually um but it is really cool but no flavio is love flavio i still prefer says tonya uh the mario and luigi games yeah i agree with that after playing like more of them i liked paper mario better at first but then i came to appreciate the deeper battle system of mario and luigi and it was more consistent <laughs> as the series went on with um having fun characters and stuff now where could the boss arena be in this level so i've got all the polyps right yeah where was it in the last uh, game my guess might be somewhere around the middle but i might hug the right side of the screen first to see just to see could be over here somewhere um tonya is wondering if Virtual Magic Kingdom had any Little Mermaid King, Little Mermaid content. I don't think I know what that is. Virtual Magic Kingdom, is that the Connect Disneyland game? Yeah, there's been a few Disneyland games. Oh, I guess it was that little hut there, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. We're gonna try out that special weapon by pushing up with button two. Go. Yeah. Take that worth it <laughs> but since i got that extra continue i do feel a bit better about spamming in this one and yeah medusa here uh the eyes are still moving and they're moving quite erratically uh, but we've only got one snake in this version a bit easier to deal with we'll just sit here and blast it until it's done and tonya's saying okay so virtual magic kingdom is a discontinued disney mmo of which there are a good handful of those yeah it wasn't toontown one as well something like that the reduced screen size with game gear kills many of those games totally agree i always prefer to go for the master system version if one exists and if not then i try and find a fan patch that converts the game gear to a master system version um, it really helps any game so many games to have a larger screen size um, which is what kills um a lot of ports that were going from consoles to next generation handhelds like snes ports to game boy advance for example is a lot of those um but yeah <laughs> tonya says it makes them unplayable um paper mario for as much as i love the first game says tonya it has always been shall i say baby's first rpg yeah that's part of my problem with it like it's the gameplay is very simplistic um flounder please oh i have no flounders Arr, that's very frustrating i can't just sneak a shot in the corner there i have to spend 150 of my hard-earned treasure to get a flounder for that rock unless i can despawn the sprite but that's not reliable let's just go find scuttle oh there it is Um, yeah you're right like it being simple does make it kid friendly but i don't know i think kids can handle more complex games as well and it doesn't have to be incredibly simplistic to be child friendly there's other ways to do it okay flounder oh this guy came back that's okay we'll deal with it like we did the shark and like i did when i first approached this room stand in the right place it's gonna move diagonally around and we just keep shooting nope it went off screen nuts okay maybe i can actually sneak past it oh, i still get hit that's fine that's fine go flounder all right i'll take that hit that's fine one continue it could probably last till ursula right i'm not going to be able to afford that other continue unfortunately the way things are going hey back off that's right i'm the queen of the seas okay polyps reveal yourselves all right down and then up diagonally Okay, good. 
What? Oh, it happened again. I hate this. Enemies respawning when you're on the map screen. Let's just rewind to before we open the map screen. There we go. Cheesy, cheesy. Easy, cheesy. Uh oh. No, not again. I need to buy another flounder. Very frustrating. That's okay. Hey, buddy. Ugh, eels. Surprise eels are the worst kind of eels. Okay. So, Tonya on Thousand Year Door. Writing is good, puzzles are fun, but I'm blasting through the game and I'm overleveled to the point that enemies from the same chapter are giving me two star points. Yes, indeed. People say that a problem with latter day Paper Mario games is that battles are pointless. People say that. I'm not saying that's true. Or that it's a failure of game design. Although I believe both those things. But that doesn't make them true. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this problem existed in the early Paper Mario games. It was incredibly easy to overlevel yourself to the point the battles become meaningless. Um, don't give you any star points. I guess you can still have money from them, but that's the same argument for the later games anyway. Alright, give me another flounder. Ugh. Keep getting hit as well, losing my health. Blech. Okay, so yes, across there and over there. I hope I don't need another flounder. I'll take that hit. We can do this. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it's fine. Paper Mario is cool. It's got flaws and problems, but it's a really interesting series with really fun stuff about it. <laughs> Tonya declaring that the respawning enemies are bollocks. Yes, indeed. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad, 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 mad. Oh well, it's fine. This time, let's be careful. Get a diagonal shot off, maybe. Yeah. Sit like this. Nope. Hitting that rock wall. Ah! Alright. New plan. Sneak around. Yes, it's a stealth game. Now we have a scuttle again. Oof. Yeah, up there. Cool. Okay, buddy. The extortion continues. Hope that's the last one. <laughs> Save state there just in case. Oh, okay. One, two. Oh! Um, hold on a sec. Package delivery. Oh, the doorbell's loud, it hurt your ears. Sorry about that. Yes, that's too bad. By the way, one little second here. Let's appreciate Ariel's 8 bit sprite face. That is a work of art. Very simplistic, but I find it has charm. The hair, I don't know, a bit awkward. On the bench there. Hmm. And I don't know what's going on with her left arm. Actually, the more I look at it, it's pretty bad. This is really good though. The side sprite, lovely. Down sprite, it's fine. The hands look odd. <laughs> uh, diagonal, 
That's good. That's a little bit awkward. She's got one eye. Is that her nose sticking out? Hard to tell. Hmm, interesting stuff. Right. Let's get on with it. Flounder. Hopefully for the last time. Get that dang old rock out of my dang old face. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, do I prefer the first Paper Mario? Hmm. That is an interesting question. I never like ranking things. But as far as I'm concerned, the first two are about equal in my mind, perhaps. I like them both a fair bit. I like that the second one takes more risks and has different kinds of characters and world settings and stuff. Um, but yeah, as, as you're saying, I agree. I like Super Paper Mario the most for its story. Um, in Tony's case, Courtney convinced her. Um, the Thousand Year Doors story has issues. Yeah. Although, I do like that it doesn't have Bowser as the main villain, of course. Um. <laughs> but I prefer them all to, well, you know. And apologizing to Gibbon, who is a fan of latter-day Paper Mario in this chat. Yeah, sorry Gibbon. It's just a matter of preference. I'm not going to claim that objectively. So what is this? Throwing many urchins at me. <laughs> That's a very squat and flat looking Ursula, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so... This is going to be really hard to avoid all those urchins. So I think we're going to go with the tried and true method. Standing in one place and mashing. <laughs> Gibbon says, it's fine, lol. Yes, well. Sticker Star has really good music, I'll say that. <laughs> Tonya says, at least I'm not a jerk. Well, I am a jerk, but a lovable one. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes! Good, I just managed to outlast. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations! You have defeated us. Yeah, um... That's a nice music track, and it's not just Under the Sea again, which I really, really appreciate at this point. Yeah, I'm let that run. But yeah, the one of the reasons I like Super Paper Mario a lot is because you don't have that problem with the battles, because all the tedium of the battles has been stripped out entirely. It's uh, a lot more action-based. Um, with RPG elements. It's not like, stop everything, let's go into a really slow turn-based battle, um, which is just wasting your time. And yeah, the story is the best of all of the Paper Marios, really. Um, you get Peach in your party, that's a big plus. Uh, yeah, it's a really cool game. Good villain team as well. But anyway, Little Mermaid. Yeah, a lot of Paper Mario chat here, but that's fine. I guess that's the end. Yeah, good timing, actually. Um, let me see. I think I pretty much achieved everything I wanted to. You know what? Really quick, we're going to go back to the Mega Drive one and see if there's more polyps in a difficult game. Just to answer that question for my mind. While I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, as far as the game gaming is concerned for the stream today, that's it. We're, we're done. So thank you very much for joining me. This has been a lot of fun exploring these more thoroughly. Um, it was definitely worth checking out the 8-bit one. Yeah, 11. I'm pretty sure the other difficulty only had 11 at the start as well. So I guess the polyps don't change. There you go. There's your answer. And yeah, zero keys, zero specials. Oh, you do get three continues apparently on difficult. There you go. So that's Ariel the Little Mermaid, the Blue Sky software. 
um, licensed game for the Disney Little Mermaid movie for Sega consoles. Oh my gosh, I had so many notes I didn't even get to. Maybe I'll save them for next week, which is kind of what I did last week. <laughs> I had notes that I didn't get to then, and I put them into this week's document, which is the same document, just with a line break. Lol. Um, oh yeah, Dora the Explorer, Dora Saves the Mermaids. I watched the credits. The project coordinator is Marcus Fish. Mmm, suspicious. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of notes here about stuff about the movie. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this um, observation. Uh, last week during the stream, my spouse Kathy was in chat and she said, <laughs> she, she declared that Sebastian is the Olaf of a Little Mermaid and now having read all the comics, seen all of the show, I 100% agree. Sebastian is <laughs> like, he's really annoying. And if they feature him too much, then it gets really grating. Um, the, the more he's the focus, the more I dislike that particular piece of media. And um, <laughs> uh, and I was, yeah, when, when it became clear that it was a Sebastian-focused episode, it was a big groan moment. Um, so yeah, Sebastian can just go away as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, yes, you're right. The title for the Sega game is Disney's Ariel the Little Mermaid. Correct. A lot of Disney games start with Disney's if you're looking in the Twitch game picker for what game you're playing. Um... Oh my gosh, what's Raw Toonage? Sebastian had his own solo short series in Raw Toonage, says Tonya. Yeah, he was like the breakout character, but he's really overexposed as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I got really annoyed at him. There's, uh, th that's what I was going to say. There was actually an episode of the show where the whole premise, this is the dinosaur episode actually, the whole premise is that Triton is annoyed by Sebastian, who bothers him all the time and tries to get away from him and have a holiday without him, and yet he tags along and continues to annoy everyone. Like, you got... <laughs> you can't make that episode and not be self-aware about how he actually is in the show. But anyway, he's easy to write for, I guess. I suppose so. Anyway, let's call it there. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad I gave the 8-bit game its due. And yeah, thanks for joining me. I've been enjoying the deep dive into Little Mermaid stuff. Uh, pun, pun, pun. But yeah, I'll see you next week for Little Mermaid 2. Return to the Sea, I think, is the name of the movie. But yeah, I'll be playing the game based on PlayStation 1. All right, bye-bye. Love you.